The word Zion translates as a place of peace and relaxation. Take a drive through the unreal canyons of Zion National, showing off its spectacular forms and vivid colors, and we bet you'll find quite a few more words to describe what it means. Prepare to be impressed, not just with the awesome scenery, but how we'll be seeing it in the Hyundai Kona Electric with its 258 mile range and no emissions. It's the better way to go see and do more all on a single charge. So climb aboard and join us for this episode of Hyundai Highways. Our journey takes us east on State Road 9. We'll take an excursion up and back on floor of the Canyon Road before continuing on the 9 and making our last stop in Mount Carmel Junction. So we're on our way to meet our guide, and I'm not making this up. Her name is Scout. Has there ever been a name more perfect for a guide? I think not. Hello. Hello. How are you? Welcome to Zion. Thank you so it's much. Good to see you. So good to see you. I'm so excited to learn about this park and just like check out these amazing rocks. This is beautiful. <laughs> it is. What Should we go explore? Say? Beautiful. Tell me a little bit about Zion. So where we are in the world right here in the southwestern United States is between the Grand Canyon and Bryce Canyon here in Utah. There are 37 layers of geology exposed. So the Grand Canyon this has... This would be like a cake. It's like a like cake. Like a 37... Exactly. Or like a 37 a seven layer, layer dip. cake. Have you had seven yes, layer dip? Yes, just like that. <laughs> this is a 37 layer dip. And we're at the avocado layer, right? <laughs> so there, this is Angel's Landing. You have people on the very top. Wow. There's chains that you can hold on to. It's a single track. It's amazing. That is beautiful. So this is the Temple of Sinawava. What does Sinawava mean? Sinawava is one of the creator gods of the Northern Paiute, the tribe that lived here before the uh, white settlers arrived. And uh, an interesting thing about this being a temple, sometimes people come and they, they look and say, well, where's the temple? <laughs> <laughs> We're looking this, for like right. a structure. So um, Zion Canyon was known by the Native Americans here as Makunta Weep. It's a beautiful name. And, it became Makuntaweep National Monument in 1918 and Zion National Park in 1919. And the other oh, wow. thing that's amazing is to consider that this river, this tiny little river, carved it all. Look at the way the light reflects off the top. The main thing here is the reflected light. Look at it reflecting on the water. Oh, yeah. Turning the water golden. You always got to turn and look what's behind you. <laughs> <laughs> It's very beautiful. And what I have personally witnessed over the years of guiding here is that what we're doing is getting better and better and better at taking care of what we love and loving each other and helping each other be good people here. Scott, do you write poetry? I feel like you do. I, if not, you should. I, I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that coming. Heck yeah. Um, let's, keep, let's keep exploring other parts of the park and and then you just keep dropping beautiful poetry and wisdom. <laughs> now we're heading to check out the Great Arch of Zion, which is way more popular than the merely adequate Arch of Zion. It is heating up. The sun feels good. <laughs> the sun feels amazing. And this view is amazing. This is the Great Arch of Zion. The Great Arch of Zion, yes. Yep. It's an arch because that's the natural way that when the rock falls out, when okay. it's eroding, it is always, almost always a natural arch so like So there that. was rock there. And there was rock there that fell, fell out. out. And you can see there's a trail up above. There's people on the very yeah. top above it. Oh, that's an awesome trail. And then black in the middle is from water. From water. You can see there's a cut in the rock right there. And that's where the water, when it rains up in here and all the water comes off this slick rock, it's channeled right there. So huh. there's a huge waterfall that's that incredible. comes down right there. This that's... country's amazing. You know what else is amazing? 
we're, we got this electric car. This amazing electric, electric car. And and I know there's two charging stations. Do you know about these? There are two charging stations. One is at the lodge up in the canyon, and the other is right at the visitor center. There are a bunch, and they're closest. If you want to ride, well, you have to ride the shuttle to go in the canyon. Yeah. The closest parking places to the shuttle are where you charge your electric vehicle. Ooh, you get prime another, seating, another, another perk. <laughs> yeah, another perk to be in an electric car. That's so good. I mean, they're, they're doing what we're doing, saying, hey, you can do a road trip in an electric car. Yes. Like, you can come here and be and check out all this beautiful nature and also do it in a way that is exactly. good to nature. If you're a fan of engineering marvels, driving through the Zion Mount Carmel Tunnel will really get your adrenaline pumping, especially if you're claustrophobic like I am. All right, so we're about to go in to this tunnel. We're going into this amazing <laughs> tunnel. Oh, wow. It is dark. <laughs> I guess I should have assumed that. Yeah, so being the daughter of an engineer, I have to say this tunnel of ours is amazing to me. Just thinking about what it took to build this tunnel. I, and when you drive through it, you'll see that there are windows occasionally. And I always thought that those must have been for ventilation or, or something that the air moved through. The way they built this tunnel is they went up to six places and they blew holes into the rock pulled the rubble out, and then from each of those holes, they worked in both directions to meet huh. in the middle. So there's one of these holes every time the tunnel turns, because you'll see this tunnel turns going through this rock. So it's 1.1 miles. 1.1 miles. And they're going one foot at a time. solid rock, yeah. <laughs> Here's the light at the end of the, the tunnel. The light at the end of the tunnel. Literally. So we're on our way to Checkerboard. Checkerboard Mesa. Checkerboard M Mesa. Um, what? Is, is that another rock formation? It are is. Are we playing checkers? It is. We, are, we <laughs> could play checkers. You know, it'd sound a lot classier if they called it the chessboard mesa. I'm just saying. So, okay, yeah. so tell me it's how this works mesa. again. Well, you can see the horizontal lines are the cross bedding of the sandstone. So that's okay. the sand dunes. Just like, they, the wind laid like in the, the sand. Other dunes. Like sand dunes. We got dunes. some sand. So. Right. So Sideways. that's the lines going horizontally. The vertical cracks are just from general geologic pressure, the movement of the earth, forming these vertical cracks. And then the water runs down every crack, yeah. opens it up. Op and it, when it freezes in the winter, the freezing, the thawing, pushes it further and further apart. And so, so it's so the opening checkerboards, these cracks. Like the cracks are, are getting, well, the vertical ones are getting bigger. Exactly. And then the horizontal ones stay in the same. They're like, right. we're They're fine. being eroded by wind and water. Scout, thank you so much for teaching us about this park and rocks and sheep and dropping some poems and wisdom constantly. We really, really appreciate it. This has been so fabulous. This has been I so love fun. I sharing my park. Yes. <laughs> I'm in a great mood. You know why? because we're on our way to a restaurant that's famous for its pie. Mmm, pie. The original antidepressant. Come on in this hey. house, Esteban. Oh my goodness. It's good to see you, this good to see you. This is amazing. Yeah. Come on in. You. I gotta ask, the sign. The sign? <laughs> it's a famous sign, Thunderbird Restaurant. Home, home of the homemade, homemade pie. pie. <laughs> well, back in 1940, it, it was depression, 30s and 40s. My granddad couldn't find a board. He couldn't afford to buy a board. So whatever floated down the river, he'd go scrounge out of the river to make the signs on, and a home wouldn't fit on the signs. So he would shorten it down to home of the homemade pies to fit on the boards that he would find. So he literally couldn't, homemade was too long. So he said, Emini, get out of here. Right. Homemade pies. So in the 60s, when we had this sign made out here, you can see it looks like a piece of driftwood. Oh, yeah. It has to represent the first signs he ever made in the 40s. And we put that on the bottom of the sign when we built it. Wow. Okay. Here is the pie. All right. So this is Thunderberry. Oh, this is this Thunderberry. Is... Thank you, Lloyd. Thank you, Lloyd. Tell me the berries that are in this again. Blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Isn't that good? That is so good. 
Ed, thank you so much for uh, for the tour, for the history, for the pie. Uh, I really appreciate it. And and we like this is in the middle of so many beautiful national parks, and it the sign just everything about this is so lovely. And I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. You bet. Well, that's fun. Thank you for stopping in and seeing us. Oh my gosh, we'll, we'll see, see you, you soon. Again. Yeah, I'm coming back. Of course, I'm coming back. Everybody right. comes back. <laughs> <laughs>